everybody. Dr. Nicholas Perna um, here in the Mississippi College Voice, uh, excuse me, Singing Voice Research Laboratory. Uh, and I wanted to hop on because we have a little thread going in one of our groups about um, a previous video I made of making some different sounds um, in, in either uh, classical or musical theater terms and uh, asked some questions about what I thought about it um, in the sounds that I was making regarding um, nasalance, which was a previous research area of mine. And um, this device um, is an old crude nasometer. Um, this measures what Rottenberg identifies as F1 nasalance or first format nasalance because it has a little bit of sensitivity in the frequency of roughly, it's been a while since I've looked at the documentation, but I think three to 800 hertz, maybe it's three to a thousand. Um, it's in one of my papers uh, on nasality that's been published in Journal of Singing, I think. Um, but it's, on, it's also on the Glottal Enterprises website, or at least maybe it was on Marty's personal website, I don't remember. Um, but uh, anyway, so this is a nasometer. This one just, even though it has a flow mask, this one just measures acoustic signal. There's no tube that would measure um, airflow signal. So this is just an acoustic measurement, similar to the flow divider that they have, but, but this is the one with the mask. Um, and in my last video, we were talking about this, I was doing some sounds um, classically, and then like I called it musical theater, call it whatever you want really just in two different kinds of singing where I was trying to emphasize the way a classical tenor turns over and then kind of de-emphasizing that and allowing the voice to stay open to a higher frequency so what I'm talking about I was using A scales and there I actually turned over late um, I haven't vocalized at all today uh, and then comparing that sort of more classical one, although I stayed open on the F sharp. Let me do it again because it's going to bother me. Um, then staying just open. Uh, where we have a that, that really kind of traditional. Um, if, if you believe in format tuning or, or, or resonance tracking, um, kind of tracking the second harmonic with that with that lower vocal tract resonance that we commonly see reported on. Um, also, some differences in the clustering of my of my singer's format. At least, if I go back and look, I imagine there should be, should have been. Um, but the question was posed like, what, what about nasalance with with that? Um, so let's let's let let's see. I'll I'll do the classical one first. Actually, let me just go back and well, let me just go back and forth on the A between the two sounds a little bit so you can get an example. I have to take my glasses off to do this. The higher spots on the graph are, are, are now because of the vibrato it's not a device that's meant to do that but um, oh, I should have stopped it but the higher peaks of the graph are where there's more nasal air signal uh, acoustic signal excuse me wrong word both have A's there's more acoustic signal coming out my nose in ratio to the nose and the mouth signal combined um, so let me do like a scale like that uh, here's classical so yes, uh, that will very much please uh, Dr. Glasner to see that I am employing some VPO as I ascend through Passaggio. Um, now let me do it the other way. Let me do it again. I can't. 
can't actually see what I'm doing because I had to take my glasses off. <laughs> um, you'll ha I'll have to go back and actually do a comparison of those two. I mean, it looks like, honestly, if, I, if I'm basing it on what I saw really quickly, you know, we're kind of hanging just under 20% kind of on average. Um, this is 18. Let me do the classical one again just to see what that difference is. Reset it. Um, That's probably higher. Nope, lower. But still, as I go into Passaggio on both of them, on both of them, we're seeing an increase in nasalance, which does align with what my research into professional tenors has shown back way, way back from my dissertation, which was a follow-up to Birch et al., which came out of Sundberg's lab, which found on that vowel that tenors did this, and then also aligns with Externach in Journal of Voice 20... 20-something, 2019 maybe, um, that demonstrated that tenors did that on ah uh, as well. Now, my guess is, if I since I have some time, um, <laughs> I'm shooting these silly videos over my lunch break because, you know, why not? Um, it's what, that's the advantage of having your lab right next to your office. Um, uh, let, me, let me try this again and Maybe we'll do it uh, on a different vowel. Like, let's try it on a round vowel and see what happens. My guess is not nearly as much. Uh, so what are we gonna do? We're gonna do this classically, I guess. Where's the cursor? say personally I'm not so convinced about the reading of this graph in general because um, that seems like a remarkably high amount of nasal emission for that vowel in the manner in which I just sang it there's the spectrum which by the way Voce Vista is being picked up by my earthworks this is on a different channel of the virtual input. In case for you sound audiophiles who are like, wait, no, 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 what's picking what up? There's obviously bleed happening, but I mean, it's not a clean audio signal coming from this. It's distorted because, Voce Vista is distorted because it's coming literally through this. Um, but Voce Vista is not picking up what's coming inside of this. Anyway, so that's what we have there on that ooh. Now, let's do ooh. I'm going to do the kind of more musical theater ew kind of thing, and let's see what happens. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. E not being able to see what I was doing. One more time. For me. E there we go. Uh, you know, I still don't know that I believe that even that is that actually that nasal, personally. Maybe. But I just don't know that I totally buy the readings of this graph. I personally think it's that since my lowest resonance on U is within probably the lower threshold of what this peaks, that's why this is showing uh, a higher result. It's also possible on the Oz from before with this device that the reason I was actually showing higher 
VPO, higher nasalance, is actually due to the fact that this device was picking up my first vocal tract resonance engaging right before the turn and that that threw off the device. There's lots of variables, but I figured it would be cooler to make a little video than to type out a long-winded explanation because um, this can then be just up for posterity. Uh, should I do a frontal vowel before we before we go? Okay, let's do that. Okay. Uh, who knows where we are in pitch? Probably lost it. There's what that looked like. E Definitely lower than I think the ah was. Well, although the ah started lower. But again, is it that way because that first resonance tracks early enough and is brought out enough? I don't know. I just don't know that I buy it. Mm, it's possible. It's possible. I'm already singing with some VPO there, but I don't know. Let's see what happens if we switch. So we're gonna go to E. Stop. Uh, so we're gonna do like a E. E. Something like that. Um. E. Hey. Hey. <laughs> we can sum it out. Uh. Let's see. E. See, I would expect to have that was our the highest average nasalance, and that one I kind of would have expected the way I did that, which was more than than the, the one I did classically. That one I kind of buy, and so that's when I, I I doubt myself. I'm like, well, was that real or was that just the device? I don't know. Um, the uh, newer Glottal Enterprises systems give us more true readings because they're measuring airflow. Um, but hey, we do what we can, right? Um, this was fun. Uh, and thanks for inspiring uh, another little lunch break video. Uh, one of my friends uh, from another friend sharing. Uh, thanks for sharing my videos, everybody. Fun. And uh, if you're interested uh, in uh, making a donation toward the Mississippi College uh, Singing Voice Research Laboratory, you can get in touch with me and I'll make sure that you get some information on how to donate.